Do you guys want to play another game of guess the etymology? Yeah, it would we'll take a few minutes. All right. It's kind of fun. So I got some common English phrases here, um, and, and we'll see if uh, these guys can guess uh, the origin. Um, waking up on the wrong side of the bed. It can't be the obvious. Uh... I know it's used to just mean you're in a shitty mood, but... Yeah, meaning start the day in a bad temper. Origin? Throughout history, the left side of basically anything was considered to be the evil side. So waking up on the left side was also considered a sign of bad luck. To ward off evil, house owners would push the left sides of the beds to the corners so the guests would have no other option than to get up on the right side. (laughs) What if they sleep with their head towards the bottom? (laughs) Yeah, what? Yeah, what's what if the, you just slide down and get up from your feet? What if you sleep in the middle of the bed? <laughs> <laughs> I got up from the south side of the bed. What you gonna do about it? <laughs> we'll just edit that joke out, okay, guys? <laughs> <laughs> you have to talk to Zach. <laughs> uh, my. I copied and pasted this, and it co- pasted it kind of weird, so I'm having trouble. Okay. Next one. Butter someone up. Butter someone up. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be, like, from using butter to make things better, taste better, you know? Same thing. So you're trying to get something out of someone, so you butter them up. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I just <laughs> give them the old buttery hand job. <laughs> I guess every once in a while, uh, butter helps things. Uh, <laughs> Lube them up. Fit. Hey. So, so the meaning, flatter or otherwise ingratiate oneself with someone. Origin, uh, the people of ancient India mm. used to throw balls of clarified butter at the statues of gods in order to seek a favor. Oh, okay. Huh. huh. And made it. Okay. Buttering you up. Next one. Up them gods. Next one. Put a sock in it. Put a sock in it. I mean, that seems like a sexual thing to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it just means shut up, but like, what were people stuffing socks in to make this a, a saying? <laughs> right? Yeah. Let's see. So the meaning stop talking. Origin, in the late 19th century, people would use woolen socks to stuff the horns of their gramophones or record players to lower the sound, uh, since these machines had no volume controllers. I didn't realize that they didn't have a volume switch. You just mm. <laughs> stick, a, stick a sock in it. Next one, son of a gun. Son of a gun. I know what it means, but where did it come from? Son of a gun. He's a son of a gun. So the meaning, a jocular or affectionate way of addressing or referring to someone. Origin. Back in the day, sailors would sometimes take their wives on long ocean voyages. It is believed that if the woman uh, gave birth on a ship, it would take place between the cannons on the ship's gun deck, since it was the most secluded place. Because of this reason, a child that was born on a ship would be called a son of a gun. Oh, wow. I would not have gotten that one. I was working my way towards it. I I would have figured it out. (laughs) Uh, The next one, best man. I mean, I'm guessing the next most viable uh, option to marry, right? Like, that's got to (laughs) be what that is. The best man. The guy who's not getting married, but it's still the most viable. It seems like he'd be the second best man. If the guy getting married is supposedly the best. Oh, he's taken. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Meaning, a male friend or relative chosen by a bridegroom to assist him at the wedding. Origin. It is said that during feudal days, it was possible that a rival lord would try to break up a wedding ceremony and steal the bride for political reasons. To avoid any trouble, grooms would ask their best friends to stand next to them during the ceremony so they would help during the possible battle. The man standing next to the groom was named Best Man. Oh, so he's like a protector. Somebody would just straight up snatch up your wife at a wedding? 
like while the ceremony's happening. <laughs> and it was like so common that they had to get yeah. help you, for it. You gotta wash my back during the wedding. So like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one. Born with a silver spoon in your mouth. That's just having rich parents, right? Right. But origin. Rich people have silver spoons. I mean, that's what I would kind of think. Yeah, the wealthier people would have the silver spoons, right? Yeah, there's got to be some stupid origin compared to that. It's got to be something else. Let's see. So, meaning, be born into a wealthy family uh, of high social standing. Origin. It is an old tradition for godparents to gift a silver spoon to a christened child. However, not everyone is able to afford this type of luxury gift, so those who did receive the spoon as a gift were considered to be wealthy, sometimes even spoiled. I mean, so kind of. My, uh, so... My uh, parents got that for, you know, their my nephews, like uh, silver glasses. And I, I think, I'm not sure about silver spoons, but silver glasses. Those things turn black so fast, man. Like, Yeah, you uh, have to keep up with it. Yeah, I don't know what the point of having silver dishware was like. I don't. They know. turn black? Yeah. Yeah, they tarnish. You got to polish them. They are supposed, silver is supposed to be antibacterial, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next one, Steal One's Thunder. Oh, that's got to be like some Greek thing, like somebody stole thunder from a god or something. I don't know. I could see that. Uh, meaning, win praise for oneself by uh, preempting someone else's attempt to impress. Origin, you think that you've done something awesome and unique, but someone uh, got in there first and took your credit. Spare a thought for playwright John Dennis, who back in the 18th century made a machine that could nicely mimic the sound of thunder for his play. Sadly, his play wasn't a success, but somebody had taken note of his, his clever invention. When later on in another theater, Dennis found somebody had copied his thunder machine and was using it without credit, he got mad. Really mad. Somebody had stolen his thunder. Hmm. Would not have guessed that one. No. Next one, get one's goat. Get um, one's goat. Stealing someone's goat. <laughs> it just sounds like stealing someone's goat, yeah. <laughs> uh, meaning irritate someone. Origin, during horse racing, some horses would get anxious, so owners would place uh, goats in the stalls with them to calm them down. I'm surprised that would calm them down. Mm -hmm. Rival horse owners would sometimes steal these goats, therefore upsetting the horse and making it more likely to lose. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we were right. <laughs> they stole my goat. <laughs> oh, this one I kind of know. The Achilles heel. Oh, yeah. Because, like, he, he, like, was supposed to, like, put this stuff on him that made it invulnerable, invulnerable, but didn't he get, like, a leaf stuck to his heel or something and it didn't cover that spot or I something? Thought, like, I thought his mom dipped yeah. him in, like, oil or oh, something. Oh, okay. When, when he got dipped, like, she had to hold his by the heel. So oh, he okay. Get, so oh, he didn't get water from, like, a holy something or something. Uh, meaning, a weakness or vul vulnerable point. Origin. The phrase comes from the Greek mythology where Thetis uh, dipped her son Achilles in the Styx, a river that was believed to be a source of incredible power and invulnerability. However, uh, Thetis was um, holding her son by the heel, meaning it was the only part of the body that was not touched by water, making his heel vulnerable. Eventually, Achilles was killed by the shot of an arrow in his heel. That would be painful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, the next one, my ears are burning. This was some guy setting some other one's ears on fire, literally. <laughs> right. It was like when someone's talking about you, right? Yeah. Yeah. My ears are burning. I don't know. Uh, meaning, one is subconsciously aware of being talked about or criticized. Origin. The idiom dates back to ancient Romans, who believed that burning sensations in various organs had different meanings. In fact, it was believed that if your left ear is burning, it signaled an evil intent, and if your right ear was burning, you were actually being praised. My dick is burning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it means you've been fucking prostitutes. <laughs> and I think this is the last one. Let the cat out of the bag. 
I imagine if you put a cat in the bag, he would be pretty pissed when you let him out. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like uh, maybe like a classical form of dog catchers, cat catchers. <laughs> Uh, meaning, reveal a secret carelessly or by mistake. Origin. Some time ago, farmers who sold pigs would bring them to the market wrapped up in a bag. Unscrupulous ones would replace the pig with a cat, and if someone would accidentally let the cat out, their fraud would be uncovered. <laughs> That's another thing. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so they were passing off cats as pigs. <laughs> um, I feel like you could just pick one of them up and figure that one out. It's like 10 pounds. <laughs> that yeah, is a weird it's one. pretty weird. What am I going to do with all these cats? I <laughs> <laughs> got you a piggy. Yeah, meow. <laughs> I mean. Don't, look, be, don't look inside. <laughs> it's stupid to fall for that. He's like, eh, we'll still eat it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>